What's up everyone, it's Josh with Market Movers Academy. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down Ethereum, Bitcoin, and US 30. Uh, I just recently started looking into crypto a little bit more. Um, you know, I see the potential in these coins and uh, yeah, hopefully they make me rich someday. My uh, strategy has so far proven consistent with US 30. Um, I'm a very experienced trader with US 30. I have, you know, over three years of experience trading it and I developed a, you know, strategy to snipe the market and not get those, you know, mediocre entries like most other people. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it on Ethereum. We're looking at the daily time frame. So first things first, we need to figure out where we are in the market. So, you know, right here, this was the start of the bullish trend that we're currently in. So if we take a closer look, we have a top of the consolidation and a bottom of the consolidation, right? But if we look to the left, all you have to do, here's a big push up. Here's the first pullback. So you go ahead and highlight the top of it. Then you're going to highlight the bottom of it. Let's adjust it a little bit. Yeah, there. And, you know, if you look closely, it was used as resistance up top, and then it was used as demand on the bottom. And if you look really closely, uh, you can see a reversal pattern in the candlesticks. I teach all about this stuff in my course if you want a further in-depth tutorial on how to, you know, view the charts. But uh, with that being said, you know, with the consolidation demand, we broke above it. So this was the first retest. And if you want to know why that happened at that zone, all you have to do is look to the left. Here was a strong demand level. That's what caused, you know, that massive spike up. So it's only right that we broke above that zone and then we retested it perfectly. You could have gotten a perfect entry in and, you know, you'd be in profit from 1300 all the way, you know, 1900 around there. Looking where at where price is currently at, if you look to the left, we're at this zone right here. So if we go ahead and highlight the top of it and then we highlight the bottom of it, you can see that we're using it as supply right now. You know, there was a bearish candlestick that formed rejecting from that zone. And um, if you kind of take it a step further, the market movers got in for the buy a thousand dollars. And right now price is nearing 2000. So these guys have already doubled their money, right? It's only right that, you know, they secure partials now that they've doubled it and the market starts falling a bit just because there's added bearish pressure. They're freeing up, you know, all of those coins that now the retail traders can buy and that's what's going to cause a supply. So if let's say, and I think that just because, you know, looking at the past, we have a bearish pattern right here. If you look closely, here is the left shoulder. Here is the head and here is the right shoulder. So head and shoulder pattern it uh, usually signifies a change in momentum, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, you know, we were just printing lower lows. Here's support. Here's the lower low. We rallied up, and then we broke below the previous low. You know, rallied up a little bit more to sweep liquidity, and then we broke below pretty much everything. So now that we have this sudden push up, we're drawing in buyers. I really think that, you know, we still have more room to sell especially because there's unused levels at the uh, 300 range, you know, 500 range down there. And in my honest opinion, the next bull run, I don't think it's going to come from $1,000. I don't think that's, you know, cheap enough for the market movers to really get in at. Because if you think about it, these guys are investing billions of dollars into these coins, right? So in order to have the most control of the market, would you rather buy, you know, X amount of coins at $1,000, or would you rather buy X amount of coins at like $300? You know what I mean? It just, it's a better deal for everybody. And investors on Wall Street, they're not stupid. You know what I mean? So of course, they're going to manipulate the market a little bit more before that big bull run comes. So if we want to, you know, kind of see what prices or like where price could go, all you have to do is just look at where Ethereum started. 
if we zoom in a bit, you can see we have a double bottom right here. And if you look to the right, that turned into resistance. So that's a good key level. Let's go ahead and mark off that zone. And then down here at the bottom, here was the first pullback. And then if you look kind of closely, it was used as resistance right here. There was a small gap between price and the zone, but overall it was used as resistance. If you look to the right, zoom in a bit, that same zone, it was used as support twice. It was used as resistance, it got manipulated, and then it broke below it. It was used as resistance again. Then we broke above it, it was used as support. And then a support again, you could have gotten a sniper entry in on that first bull run. Would have been really easy with this strategy. But uh, since there is a big gap in price from 790 all the way to 370, I feel like there has to be some type of midpoint. You know what I mean? This is just a little too black and white. So right here um after you know this is the first pullback and then that caused that big push down so the last point of supply right before the market fell you know here was support it turned into resistance so let's go ahead and mark off that zone and then if we look all the way to the right the, it was used as uh, resistance once twice we broke above it, we manipulated it, and then we snapped above it, you know, long term. So these are three good points. Uh, the 630 range offers is a good midpoint. But uh, yeah, I really, really hope that Ethereum shoots down to maybe 500 to $250 per coin. If that's the case, I'm going to buy a bunch of it because I see the potential with these coins. They have the potential to make me a multimillionaire. And, you know, if I'm that successful in the stock market, I should be that successful in the crypto market as well. So, you know, hopefully best case scenario, I can get in, you know, somewhere down here and then ride it up to new uh, or all time highs, I should say. Moving on to US 30. I'm currently in a trade on this. I'm holding a short position. So watch, let's go to the four hour time frame. Okay, so I got this level from over here. Right here, you know, we have this huge supply zone. We had a massive supply to the downside on the four hour time frame. We almost touched it again. You know, we broke lower. And then we have the final touch of supply. And then we went into a huge bear trend. And if you look closely, this was the last wick right before that massive push down. So that's why I have it highlighted. In Confluence, we have the candlestick or the body of the candlesticks of this formation right here, along with this wick at the same zone. They were, uh, you know, at the same zone. So that's why this is a good supply. And if you look, the market, you know, touched it directly. And that was my initial signal to sell. When um, I was looking at this trade, the market was on this blue candle. I can go ahead and show you how I sent it out in my Discord. So, yeah, right here I said I'm selling US 30. Uh, looks like an H1 supply pattern is forming, very low risk. That's what the market looked like when I called out the sell. Um, you know, I was kind of coaching them through it. I said, don't over leverage, expect a 50 point stop loss. And, you know, the market slowly started taking off from there. And then it got a little bit manipulated, but I was able to get my, you know, sniper entries in at the top and I'm currently just floating in profit. I gave these guys updates, you know, we're floating in profit, looking good so far. Um, let's go back to the chart. Yeah, if you want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description. I, uh, you know, coach my students through all of the trades that I send. Uh, if there's any type of market I'm looking at, I usually send it in the Discord. So if you want to catch the next signal, don't miss out on that. Moving forward with US 30, uh, we got that rejection from supply. You know, we have these wicks down here. And with this wick, we're using it as resistance. So we're looking good so far as far as bearish market structure. But long term, as you can see, 
Here is the trend line. You know, we have one touch, two touches. This one almost touched, but I didn't highlight that one because there's confluence on this. You know, we broke above that zone. Here it's being used as support twice. We have the same exact pattern here. You know, the ascending trend line used as uh, resistance right here. And then if you look closely, we used it as support with the wick right here. So now we're in a bearish market, but we just hit our head on a potential supply zone. So looking at this now, you know, we can expect one of two things. Ideally, we're going to make it down into the 33,750 range regardless because we have one rejection to the downside. Retail traders got trapped right here, and then we proved bullish. So it's only right that we come down to this zone, retest it, and then depending on what happens there, we can either go long or if we break below it, we're going to have these zones down here as potential targets. And my final target would be at the end of that trend line that I have right here. I think maybe we can touch the trend line. If not, you know, I'm willing to take a break even or I'm willing to secure partials right here or at any of these zones. I'll just kind of act accordingly. Now, if we break below the trend line, I'm going to have a wicked entry on the sell from up here. And that could potentially lead to a big correction especially because, you know, we're approaching this supply zone. It was used as support right here, and then it flipped into resistance. So same exact strategy, finding the key levels. We're approaching that zone. Hopefully we can go short from here. If not, we might break above it and then go long and continue into higher highs. But yeah, as of right now, I'm just kind of patiently waiting. It is Asian session, not New York session. That's why I'm not looking to scale in any entries right now. It's not really the best session to trade this. I'm only holding it. Um, yeah, until New York session, I'm just kind of sitting on my hands. I might take a break even, but uh, that's about it. With Bitcoin, I made a video on this uh, a couple days ago. Let's go to the weekly time frame. So Bitcoin's at a crappy price right now. So in the previous video, I explained we have the previous high right here, and then we have demand right here. So that's why we are in this bullish uh, trend right now. And, you know, same strategy that I mentioned before, highlight the wick, body of the candles of the first pullback. That's why we're using this zone as a uh, supply now. So essentially we're stuck between demand and supply. There's no really, you know, given direction of the market. As I like to say, it's 50, 50 right now. You know, we're 50% up from demand, 50% away from supply. I wouldn't be intraday trading this just because if you look on the one hour time frame, the moves are not all that great. You know, it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 hours for this move to play out. And then you had a big correction and then you waited, I'd say, what's that? At least like another 12, 15 hours for another push up. And then you had this massive correction that lasted hours on end. You know what I mean? So it's more of a long-term holding coin. I don't, I do not recommend intraday trading this you will lose money. That's the exact reason why I do not touch Bitcoin every day. I'm looking for the long-term move. I want to catch the next bull run, just like with Ethereum. I That's literally the only purpose that cryptocurrency has for me. If I want to intraday trade, I stick to US 30, sometimes gold. I don't really trade Forex anymore. But uh, yeah, ideally for Bitcoin though, if we can get a rejection from supply or even, you know, somewhere before it and then fall really, really low, preferably into the $4,000 to $3,000 range, I'm going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin. If it dips that low, there's no reason as to why I should not buy it. That's a huge discount, especially because, you know, it peaked out at about $69,000 per coin. So if it had the value of 69,000, why wouldn't you buy it when it's at 2,000 or even at like 3,000? You know what I mean? It's just common sense. If someone offers you a huge discount, especially with cryptocurrency, you take that shit and you run with it. <clears throat>
I believe that cryptocurrency has the potential to, you know, make me a multimillionaire. I've already made thousands with US 30 in the stock market, but this one move that I'm trying to chase will impact my future tremendously. And, you know, if you guys join the Discord, you will be able to catch in on that move too. I'm watching this thing every day. I check on it multiple times a day. And so far it's following my strategy. Hopefully when it, you know, dips down into my points of interest, I can send out a signal and everyone can benefit from it. But until then, you know, we're just sitting and waiting for the market movers to make up their mind. And yeah, as far as that goes, that's pretty much my outlook on everything. If uh, you want to learn how I, you know, completely dissect the chart, there's a link to the course in the description. I go over everything from sniping, beginner uh, tactics, institutional tricks, everything you need to know on, you know, market mastery. So, yep, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.